Welcome to the last part of Nina, as easy as one, two, three. We already looked at, at the first part of this trilogy, how to set up Nina, how the interface is structured and how you do basic things. Then in the second part, we had a good look at the sequencer. And now comes the last part of this trilogy. In most trilogies, the last part is where the big battle is happening. And at the end, there's the happy ending. And it will be here exactly this way. The big battle will be all these advanced, more difficult function, as well as a lot of plugins. And the happy ending will be that you will have an amazing tool at hand that will help you with each step along the way to get to the perfect exposures. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So in this last part, we will first look at the advanced or a little bit special features like how to do a mosaic, how to do flats, and how to connect a third-party application like Stellarium with Nina. In the second part, I will present to you various plugins which are a big help. But just one word for expectation management. It would be impossible to show you in detail for each and every plugin how actually you use it. So I will give you an introduction to the plugins that I feel bring real value to myself. And where there is more to know than actually possible in this video, I will refer to, to detailed videos. And with that, let's go to the computer and let's get going. Okay, and here we are on my computer and we are in Nina. So the first thing we want to cover is how can I use a planetarium software to actually select the object that I want to shoot. And where we are here is actually the Sky Atlas. And that's what I've shown you so far, is that you enter here an object, you search for it, and then you go into the Framing Assistant. Now there's a few issues with that. First of all, you cannot browse the sky like in a planetarium software, but you just, you already have to know. I want to shoot M13. And then you enter it here and it finds it. The other issue is there's not everything in here. It is very limited. And when I mean it's very limited, it is very limited. Let's take something very easy. The moon. Search. There is no moon. Planets. Forget about it. Stars. Nope. So you only find here in the Sky Atlas, in principle, the large object, the NGCs, the Messiers, and that's it. So, but there's a great workaround. And you might remember that when we actually go to options and then to equipment, that down here you can actually enter a planetarium software. So you could use Cartesiel, you could use the Sky X, or you could use Stellarium, which is probably one of the most commonly used. So select here Stellarium, the local host, and the port you leave unchanged. Okay, now we go into Stellarium. And in Stellarium, you go to Configuration window, you go to Plugins, and here in Plugin, you go on Remote Control. You say Load at Startup, and then you first have actually to restart Stellarium, and then only this Configure function here will be available. Then you click it, and you ensure that both here are activated, server enabled and enabled automatically on startup. And you make sure that the port here is also 8090 like in Stellarium. You save the settings and you exit. And now you're ready. Okay, so let's try that now. So we go now to search window. We select, for example, M13. Here we go, it's selected. So now we actually go back to Nina. And here we, we click here this little knob get coordinates from the planetarium. And here it is, Hercules Global Cluster. That easy. Okay, so I think that's something really useful. So let's try that now with something else. I just did it, the row up nebula. And here we obviously have an issue. And that is that even with my FRA 400, this thing is so huge, I just can actually record a tiny bit. So I need a mosaic here. So how do I do that? Very easy. Horizontal panels, two. Vertical panels, three. Yeah, much better. Now I get something decent in it, right? 
and you see it even numbers it already and I can just throw that now over into the sequence and it will plan it exactly like this. Or what I would recommend here, given that you probably will not do all the six panels in one night, that you actually save it as a target into your target list. And then you can always take one or the other part and work on it actually. But that's how easy it is to actually do mosaics and you see it does already the overlay. So you do not also not have to take care of that. And you can obviously still rotate this whole thing now. So with that, let's hop to something completely different. And that is how to do flats. And you might have actually realized that I did not present the, this part here, the flat wizard in my in the first part of this video series. But it's there very prominently here, flat wizard. And I created a dedicated video for that. And you will find the link to that in the description below. But basically what you need to actually use that is a flat panel. And I can absolutely recommend that you buy a flat panel or that you use it if you have a smaller scope in the form of a tablet, for example. But it's just so much better than the sky or a t-shirt method. And then you can state how many flats you want to take, how many dark flats you want to take, and then you just press play and it actually looks for the right exposure and even tells you if it's too bright or too dim and you can adjust the brightness of your flat panel. So an absolutely great tool I can recommend. And with that, I want to leave the advanced functions and go to the plugins. And the plugins actually you find down here. You click it and you see these are the plugins that I have installed. And if you go here to available, now you see all the plugins that exist. And by no means only the ones which I chose are the good ones. It just um, depends what you're looking for. Some are very specific, for example, this here 10 micron tools, which are related to a special mount or a special equipment or a special brand. Well, here, shut down PC, simply a plugin that you can actually shut your PC down at the end of the session. There's some which are more for planetary shooting, like Lucky Imaging. But let's have a look now at the ones which actually I installed. And the first one that I have here is Ground Station. And what this plugin actually does, it sends you messages from Nina to your cell phone. And you have a lot of different providers. It can be through email, it can be to IFTTT, or it can be through Pushover. Pushover is another app which costs $5, but then you actually get push messages on your phone and that's what I use. So how it works is that you can actually in your sequence define if there's an error, please send me a message. Or you can simply, if one thing is completed, for example, initiation sequence completed, shooting starts, things like that. You can define that and it will send you whenever you are at this place in your sequence, it will send you a message. And you will find in the description below also again a sequence which I created where all these plugins are actually utilized. Also with Ground Station, there is a detailed video by Patriot Astro. And I will put a link in the description below where he really goes step by step through the whole thing. The next one is Lightbucket. Lightbucket is an amazing plugin which actually sends while you're shooting the subs that you're doing plus some statistics right to the internet in a community where everybody can actually look at what you're shooting right now and you can watch what the other people are shooting and you get nice statistics how much you already shot per month and much more. So on one side there's more a social aspect to it but on the other side it also gives you a possibility to monitor your shooting while you're away without having the full remote desktop open. So I find this a very convenient way to have always an eye on how the shooting goes. And also here I put a link in the description below of a video that I made about Lightpocket. Next one, Hocus Focus. Hocus Focus is an extension or an improvement to the autofocus that's already included within Nina. It makes the autofocus more 
precise and more controllable. And you can also derive a lot more data from your autofocus runs down to the level where it supports you to identify if you actually have back focus issues and or if you have tilt issues. Now let's have a look for a second how I used it in a real life situation. So we are now here in the autofocus screen and we press start autofocus and now it actually does an autofocus run. This is in a very similar style as it would do it with the regular autofocus. When we look now here at the annotations, you see that you have a lot more flexibility with Hocus Focus. You can exactly select which stars should be shown. Also, for example, the one which have a bad eccentricity or which are blown out. Also here, there is a detailed video from Patriot Astro, which I can absolutely recommend. I put the link in the description below. Now this is an absolutely cool plugin, but here you need a little bit of more powerful PC to run that on. So with a Mili Quieter, for example, or something similar with a Intel Genelon processor, I would say no, this is not going to fly. I sometimes try to run PixInsight on my Mili Quieter, but usually it ended with a crash, simply probably because the processor overheated. But I tried it actually two days ago now that I have an Eagle and it's absolutely fascinating because what it's actually doing is while you're actually collecting your subs as usual, it live stacks them for electronic assisted astronomy. So you get actually to see how the noise goes down and how the picture approves and things appear while you're doing your regular shooting. So it's like an additional entertainment channel. It's also an additional opportunity. And it's also kind of a way to really understand what stacking does because you can see and experience life how the noise level goes down while you're shooting. Next one, remote copy. It's an interesting plugin, which at the end I decided not to use. So what it actually does, it uses a Windows internal process called Robocopy to actually take the pictures that you have already shot and move them somewhere else or better copy it somewhere else. So for example, it can copy it right at your computer while you're still shooting. So there might be situations where this makes a lot of sense. So why did I not use it? I thought long and hard about it and I felt like I really do not need these exposures right when I'm shooting. But what I need is a convenient way how I can actually get it from the Eagle down to my computer to do the processing. And what I felt is that it is much easier if I simply share the directory where Nina puts the subs in through the Wi-Fi network so that I have with my Mac access to the directory on the Eagle. And so that's what I did now. But if you have this use case, definitely a plugin to look at. Next, scope control. That's a very little plugin, which is very convenient. And I'm gonna show you here what it's doing. You see down here, scope control. That's all what it does. It gives you this little extra control panel so that in the imaging panel, you can actually control your scope. So if you have to slew manually out of whatever reason, if you want to park it, you can do that right in here without having to go anywhere else without needing your ASCOM window. So I feel this is very convenient. And now of all these plugins, the one which is the most convenient, most value adding, most ingenious is this here, the three point polar alignment. This is an absolute must. What it does is it polar aligns your scope without the need for Polaris in sight. It's absolutely convenient. So once you have it installed, you find it actually here also in imaging. It says it's a tab. And right here, you can actually do your polar alignment. And we can also follow along with a polar alignment I did two days ago. So here we are now ready. We press play. So now it takes three exposures, each one a little bit from each other. So this is the first, then it's loose, then it takes a second, then it's loose, and then a third. And based on that, it can actually calculate the polar alignment error. Okay, and here we go. 
here it tells me now the azimuth error and the altitude error. And you see it's very explicit. It says move left, west, move down. So I know exactly what I have to do. So what I actually did now, I went now to my scope and turned the wheels accordingly. And what the software does, it constantly updates it. So it takes now this last exposure over and over and recalculates the error so that I see, do I do the right thing or do I do the wrong thing? And also here exists a dedicated video by Patriot Astro, which I will put a link in the description below. I hope you were able to follow along. I hope you watched all three parts. And if you did, I think you're very well prepared now to utilize Nina to perfection. It might still need, as mentioned in the beginning, some additional videos, but beside that, I think you're very well prepared. If you like this trilogy and it was helpful for you, if you would like to support the channel, please have a look in the description below. There's a link to my Patreon channel. For the price of a coffee, you get a lot of additional content. See you next time and clear skies.